Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchlark, and what I have here today is a Beretta ARX 100. It's their polymer frame 556 platform, and what they've tried to do here is make a quick change barrel system and make it as lightweight with composite materials as possible. It's similar to the AUG in its construction with the polymer materials. It has a, it has a folding stock, a telescoping stock, so a bunch of features there. The use of composites is obvious. They tried to make it without any pins or bolts to hold it together. The gas system looks to be similar to a Travor, short, short gas system, a short uh, piston system. It has folding sights front and rear. Picatinny rails just about any way you want them. So it's obvious they did a lot of engineering here. I think they're going for the uh, military market. This is actually a civilian version, semi-automatic. So as is with uh, policy with us, we just kind of take them out of the box. I put a Vortex Spitfire on it. I've got some frangible ammunition. I tested the trigger pull before I came out. It was right at 10 and a half pounds. So it's obviously a service rifle in the aspect of the trigger pull. Uh, all I did was sight it in. I haven't had any malfunctions with it at all. So let's just go ahead and put a little burn on the center target. I've got MGM, guys. What you want to do, even though it's just frange ammunition, this is MGM 500 Brunel rifle target. So it's set up to take the abuse that we're about to put on it here. All right. All right, let's go ahead and shoot that target in the middle six times. Here we go. Yeah. So that was six in the middle. And we were able to keep it about 1,800 splits with that trigger pull. Uh, one thing else that's kind of unique about this, about this, uh, this semi-automatic rifle, the charge handle, there, it actually reciprocates with the bolt and you can swap it over either either or left or right-handed, so you have that uh, ability to do that. It does reciprocate with the bolt. It, it, you can change ejection patterns just by pushing a pin here. So they did a lot of fine-tuning on what they perceive might be the next battle rifle. So let's go ahead and play with it a little bit more. Let's go left to right, two on each. And see if we can keep times running about the same. All right, here we go. Got a little bit wild on that center one. Got a little bit to the right. The one thing I noticed when I first assembled it, this scope is made for an AR. It does co-witness the sights pretty close. The only thing I can see is that the drop in the stock is a little bit more than an AR. And I think what their reason for that is when you close it, you can fire it and it will still eject cases either left or right with the stock folded. So kind of a compromise. Got to pick my head up. I'll lose my cheek weld when I shoot it. But other than that, it seems to stay where it needs to go. So uh, let's see what we have left in the magazine here. And it also has ambidextrous magazine release. One thing I noticed, I tried to stick a P-mag in it and it wouldn't go. So it has to have pretty much a magazine with no, no protrusions in the back, like a P-mag. It has a little bit of a step. It won't fit into the frame. Other than that, it takes a standard GI magazine of any, of any manufacturer. So let's go ahead and run that left to right again. I'm going to try to keep my cheek down a little bit better and make that happen one more time. Here we go. Oh, yep, yep. yep. Got my sights in the way. All right, we got them down. Here we go, left or right, two on each. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now I'm getting the hang of it, just take a few rounds. Okay, I've got some incendiary rounds made by Clark Custom Cartridge here in 5.56. Five, I've got my trusty MGM targets. These are C-Zone, they're hardened targets. So they're 500 Benel, they're relatively safe to shoot at this distance. Got my eye protection on. And uh, let's see what these incinerary rounds do on high speed, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Oh! <laughs> There's a whole lot of incinerous in that little 556 five, round, guys. That's kind of trick. Yeah. Hey, guys, we're out on the range shooting the ARX Beretta there. Had a little bit of a rain come down on us, so we uh, decided to come inside and just look at some guns and give you some comparisons. 
Looking at this kind of reminded me of the ACR. And what, you, what, it, what it looks like is that the evolution of the 556 platform is going to more polymer. Uh, folding stocks seem to be popular. Cheek pieces, these have adjustable cheek pieces. Uh, the short gas pistons also seem to be popular. Uh, the Tavor uses a very short stroke gas piston. It has a lot of polymer on it also. It's turned out to be really a, really a nice platform. And it's made in Israel, so these guys know what they're doing, you know, so. Okay, we got an FN SCAR. It's also has some use of polymer on the bottom, it has a folding stock. It also has a reciprocating charge handle, guys. That's, uh, I've seen this on two of the guns. The, uh, the ACR has a reciprocating charge handle. Uh, the Beretta does. So there's three of them here on the table that do. The, the only one that doesn't is the uh, Tavor. So you see more and more polymers coming into, the, into, into play, trying to make them lightweight, also less maintenance. Uh, it's yet to be proven, I guess, in, a, in actual uh, field conditions. Some of these guns have been issued. I know the Tavor is. I think the Beretta has, has been issued by a couple of countries now. The FN SCAR, I'm not sure if it's been adopted by any countries yet. And the, uh, the ACR is kind of a new product out on the market. It's, uh, I know these two are multi-caliber. You can change barrels on them relatively quick. I think the Beretta has just, uh, you push a couple of buttons, you can change a barrel. So it's kind of similar in the AUG in the aspect of it. It has a lot of polymer on it, uh, quick change barrels. Uh, one thing about an AUG, you can change sighting system just by changing the barrel assembly. So that's kind of that's kind of a nice thing. I'm not a huge fan of a reciprocating charge handle. It always seemed to hit you when you need it the least. So something to think about. I know the Beretta has something new in the in the aspect you can change the charge handle from left to right without any tools, pretty much instantly. Also, which way the case ejects? Uh, just one push button, and you can make that happen. So as you see, these platforms are all evolving. They're trying to head in a different direction from the basic uh, AR platform, which is probably the most proven battle rifle in history. So it's interesting when you get them all on the table and look at them and all the different features, and uh, yet we're still not satisfied. The search has not ended. So we're going to have to do a, a better comparison on these and get them out all in range and do some accuracy testing and uh, something to look forward to in the future.